to go. I'm putting together a whole bunch of books for a friend of mine. See you later. Oh, bye. But first, we're going to read a story about a polar bear and a chameleon. That's an interesting combination, don't you think? And the second story is about a little girl who has a strange and scary neighbor. Whoa! Hey, that's Uncle John. He came. Will you read us some stories? Hey, don't worry. I came prepared. I brought a book about a little polar bear and this other book about a girl named Rose who has a strange and scary neighbor. Wow! Cool! Are you really Kino's uncle? No, not really. We just call him Uncle John because he's good to us kids, and he reads his stories, and, and he's friendly, and he's funny, and he knows lots of stories that are good for kids. Oh, did you bring any of your good stories today, John? I sure oh, did. Oh, should I call you Uncle John? John's fine. The little ones like to call me Uncle John. The story I brought today is called The Little Polar Bear, written and illustrated by Hans de Beer. Rhymes with root beer. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It sure does. <laughs> it was a big day for Lars. He was going with his father on his first hunting trip. Lars was white all over, just like his father. In fact, at the North Pole where Lars lived, everything was white because it covered in ice and snow. Lars' father showed him how to do all kinds of things, follow tracks, swim, and dive. He talked and talked, and Lars listened silently, paying close attention. Once, his father disappeared underwater and stayed so long that Lars began to worry. But when his father finally reappeared, he had a big fish for supper. When it was time to go to sleep, Lars's father said, Make a big pile of snow to protect yourself from the wind like I do. Well, Lars was proud of his pile, but he was also very tired. He quickly fell asleep, just like his father. But during the night, the ice began to crack. And the piece where Lars was lying broke off. When Lars woke up, it was morning. He was all alone in the middle of the sea. It was getting warmer and warmer, and the piece of ice and Lars's pile of snow were getting smaller and smaller. When the ice was almost completely melted, Lars saw a big barrel drifting by. Luckily, Lars was able to reach the barrel and climb on top of it. Then, a storm began to rage. As Lars clung to his bobbing barrel, he missed his father and his pile of snow more and more. drifted on the sea for a long time. At last he saw land, but he couldn't see any snow or ice. Almost everything was green, and the sun was very warm. Lars carefully slid off the barrel and stepped onto the beach. The beach was hot and yellow. It burned Lars's paws. He ran to a river nearby, but just as he was about to plunge in, a very big, tan animal sprung out of the water. Boom! It said. Lars quickly ran to hide. I was only joking, called the big tan animal. I'm Henry the Hippopotamus. Who are you? Why are you so white? Well, Lars didn't know the answer to the last question. Where, where I come from, everything is white, he said. He told Henry about his long journey and asked him how he could get back to his father. Henry listened sympathetically, but he seemed confused. He wiggled his ears, he squirmed, and finally said, the only one who can help you is Marcus, the eagle. He has traveled all over the world. He will know where you come from and how you can get back there. But we'll have to cross the river, go through the jungle, and climb the mountains to reach him. 
Lars was happy to go. But when he looked at the river, he said, The only problem is, I can't swim very well. No problem at all, said Henry. <laughs> Climb on my back. I won't sink. Lars was astonished by the things that he saw in the jungle. Henry patiently explained everything. Lars especially liked the tall brown stalks that Henry called trees. They were such fun to climb. In one brown stalk sat a funny green animal, which suddenly turned white, just like Lars. It's a chameleon, said Henry. It can change its color. Lars thought that was a handy thing to be able to do. At the edge of the jungle, the mountains began. It was a bit cooler, and Lars felt more comfortable. Henry found climbing difficult, but Lars helped by telling him where to step. After a while, Henry was exhausted. That's enough for today, he said. Tomorrow we will continue. Let's rest here and look out at the nice view. As Lars looked out over the land and sea, he began to feel homesick. Cheer up, said Henry. You'll be home again soon. The next day, they climbed higher. Henry often had to stop to catch his breath. But at last, he calls, here comes Marcus, as a huge bird swooped down near Lars. Lars ducked. Don't be afraid, said Henry. Marcus seems gruff, but he's really quite friendly. Henry said good morning to Marcus and politely explained why they had come. The eagle looked at Lars, and then he said, Well, well, a polar bear of the tropics. You're a long way from home, aren't you, young man? <laughs> Fortunately, I can arrange your passage back. Tomorrow morning, I will have Samson fetch you from the beach. Thank you very much, sir, Lars said shyly. The next morning, Henry and Lars met Marcus on the beach. Right on time, said Marcus proudly as a huge gray whale arrived. Although Henry was happy for Lars, he was also sorry to see him go. Take care of yourself, he said sadly. Thanks for everything, Henry, Lars called as the whale swam away. Marcus flew along a bit to set them on the way. Henry stood alone on the beach, kept watching for a long time. After Lars and the whale had disappeared. Samson swam a long way until they were surrounded by ice and snow. We must be near your home now, he said. At the same moment, Lars called, there he is! Father, father, I'm back! Lars's father couldn't believe his eyes. There was Lars riding on top of a whale. <laughs> Lars's father was very tired from looking for Lars, but he wasn't too tired to catch a big fish for Samson to thank him. Samson waved as he swam away. And now, said Lars's father, we must go straight home because your mother is worried. On the way home, Lars rode on his father's back. Everything was white, and he was surrounded by snow and ice. But this time, Lars talked and talked while his father was silent. He told his father about all the amazing things he had seen. Henry, the tall brown stalks, Marcus, and much more. You didn't meet anyone who was white? Asked his father in surprise. Nobody except a chameleon, said Lars, but that doesn't count. Lars had to laugh by himself because his father didn't understand his joke. <laughs> oh, boy, that was a good story, Uncle John. Oh, will Lars ever go back to the jungle, do you think? Oh, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. No. Yeah. No? Why not? Why do you think he'll go back? Maybe that same thing will happen again. Could be. Yeah. yeah. Lars made some good friends in the jungle. Uh, maybe he'll want to visit them when he grows up. Oh, well, he probably will. But the jungle's not a great place for polar bears. Why not? Well, they don't like places where it's real hot. 
They're cool weather bears. Oh, Uncle John, you know what? What? You know how the father polar bear teaches Lars how to fish? Yes. Well, my grandpa taught me how to fish. And in the story, Lars taught his father something, remember? What? Well, what did the little polar bear tell his father when he came back? About the jungle. That's right. What else? What about the jungle? He met a lot of animals. He saw an eagle. He saw an eagle. He, 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 he saw, saw a whale. Uh -huh. um, he saw a lot of trees. Trees? Yeah. Never seen he trees saw before. A lot he of mountains. saw a lot of mountains. See? Lars taught his father something, too. And Lars told his father that the chameleon didn't count. Well, what's a chameleon? A chameleon, Kino, is a lizard that can change the color of its skin for protection against predators. Oh! What's a predator? That's an animal who wants to have the chameleon for dinner. Oh! <laughs>